Welcome everybody. This video is going to be a best practices video for our F3800 series in order to best prepare you for your first installation. So one of the most important things you can do to make your install as painless as possible is to get as much information from the homeowner that you possibly can before you actually begin your installation. So when gathering the information from the homeowner, the most important thing to find out is what the largest load is that they would like to back up. If they're interested in backing up something like their air conditioner that has a high LRA rating, you wanna make sure that that LRA rating does not exceed that of our F3800. Our F3800 has an LRA rating of 80, so anything less than that, you can successfully start with this. Another important thing to consider is the max continuous amp usage that will be running through this system. This has an output of 6,000 watts or six kilowatts. So you have to make sure that the average usage does not exceed that amount. So our home power panel is rated for 75 amps. So that means regardless if you have a meter or a meter main combo, you will always need to install a sub panel for any of the essential loads that the homeowner would like backed up by our F3800 system. But before you actually go to site, one of the things that you should ask the homeowner for is a photo of their main panel. That way you can see all the loads that they have so you know what you're gonna end up moving into your sub panel that you will be installing. Another photo that you should request from the homeowner is a picture of the location that they would like the system to be installed in. So that could be a garage, a utility room, or an electrical room. Either way, you can get this photo from them and it allows you to plan your mounting and your spacing accordingly so that you know exactly where you'll be placing both the home power panel as well as the sub panel with the critical loads that you'll be installing. Requesting nameplate photos is also a very good practice. So any large load that the homeowner wants backed up, air conditioner, pool pump, heat pump, whatever it may be, ask them to take a picture of that nameplate and remember to look for the LRA rating or max amps and also remember, whatever that number ends up being, it needs to be less than 80 amps if you only have one F3800. If you have two, you can have a total of 160 locked rotor amps. Also, be sure to request the homeowner provide you with their green button data from their utility provider. That will tell you their daily average power usage, which will allow you to determine how many expansion batteries will be necessary so that they can meet their average daily demand. So now you're on site, you're ready to start your first F3800 installation. There are two different types of scenarios. The main panel is either going to be outside, it's going to be inside. First part of this video, we're gonna talk about what it looks like when the main panel is inside. So now you're in front of your install site and you've decided where you would like to mount your home power panel. So what you'll need to do is you need to pull out our template card that comes in the box of the F3800 and you'll line it up to where you want the panel to be mounted You'll drill your four holes per the template, and then you'll be able to install the mounting brackets onto the wall. You'll be able to then mount the home power panel onto those brackets, and it will look just like this. Now you're ready to install your conduit. The most important step here is to ensure that you choose the proper side. We recommend nothing larger than inch and a quarter, or you could potentially damage the home power panel. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about one of the most confusing parts of setting up the system, and that can be the connection of the CTs and their alignment. So for connecting the CTs, you'd find those connections right here in the home power panel, the dry contact ports. We have one for solar CTs, and we have the L1 and L2 dry contact ports for the grid consumption CTs. So here we are at our mock main service panel. We already talked about where the CTs are connected in the home power panel, but now I wanna show you where they're connected inside the main panel here. So we have three CTs, two of them right here are the grid consumption CTs. The important thing to remember with these two is the arrow is always pointing in the direction that current is flowing. So in this case, the arrow points down this way because power and current are flowing towards the F3800. PVCT here points towards the breaker because the current in this case is flowing into the breaker here. So we already talked about the first scenario where the main panel was inside the home or in the garage. In this scenario, our mock panel here is outside the home. So now you're in front of your install site and you've decided where you would like to mount your home power panel. So what you'll need to do is you need to pull out our template card that comes in the box of the F3800 and you'll line it up to where you want the panel to be mounted. You'll drill your four holes per the template 
and then you'll be able to install the mounting brackets onto the wall. You'll be able to then mount the home power panel onto those brackets and it would look just like this. So it's best practice to install a gutter box when the main panel is located outside the home. We recommend that the gutter box is six inches in depth and that is simply because of the conduit positioning of the home power panel. Six inches will give you the best clearance and the easiest path to run the cables up into the home power panel. Now you're ready to install your conduit. The most important step here is to ensure that you choose the proper side. We recommend nothing larger than inch and a quarter or you could potentially damage the home power panel. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about one of the most confusing parts of setting up the system and that can be the connection of the CTs and their alignment. So for connecting the CTs, you can find those connections right here in the home power panel, the dry contact ports. We have one for solar CTs and we have the L1 and L2 dry contact ports for the grid consumption CTs. So the important thing to consider in scenario two here where the panel is outside the home is when drilling your penetration. This one here goes into the gutter box that we already showed you previously in the video. And then in that gutter box, the wires go into our home power panel. So now that you're ready to wire the home power panel, there's one important thing to consider, and that is the size of the wire. So if you plan on using the full 100 amp capabilities of the home power panel, make sure that the wire that you choose is sized properly to handle 100 amps of continuous usage. Now when you actually make the connections to the home power panel, make sure that you use insulated O-ring terminals so that you can make the cleanest and most secure connection possible to the home power panel. One of the new features we added to the F3800 Plus is the ability to tie it in with a portable generator of up to 6,000 kilowatts. You can do that by tying in our generator adapter cable, which is plugged in right down here. And that cable takes a 1430 connection from the portable generators. And that generator is able to then power the home or charge the battery. Anchor Solix, live in power.